water. So it's good for life and also good for batteries. In this video, we will be adding water to my batteries, which is part of a regular maintenance I have to do. Lead acid batteries have a water and sulfuric acid mixture, and every now and then, as it charges, the water will kind of evaporate and it produces hydrogen. So you need to actually replace that water, otherwise the water level will go down and then the place will be exposed and then you lose capacity and eventually the battery dies. Speaking of dead batteries, I actually have one battery that died. I'm not sure why, but the cell just, one of the cells just decided to short. It's kind of funny because in my last video, I mentioned that, that it happened. Well, it happened to another battery. I think what happens is probably a result of just cheap batteries. So I'm hoping that if I start buying better batteries, maybe it won't happen, but I don't know, it's hard to tell. Speaking of the last video, I want to thank everybody who watched it and liked it and subscribed to my channel. I had over 100 subscribers just from that one video. So that's really cool to see that kind of growth. So yeah, I want to thank everybody for your interest and for watching my videos. So I'm hoping that I can keep making videos that interest you. So in this video, I will be doing the battery maintenance. So without further ado, let's go do that now. So here we are in the server room. So the two batteries that we'll be maintaining today are these ones here. So I've got one battery here and then one on the other side. They're in parallel. Actually, all the batteries in here are parallel, but they're kind of split into different two different groups. So we'll, we'll be taking these out and checking the water levels and then adding water. It's been probably over a year now since it's been done, so chances are it will have to get done. And right here, I got a battery that's missing. That's because it looks like one of them has a shorted cell. It's like the third time that happened, so I think it's a result of just these batteries being cheap, I guess. It's this battery over here from 2013. So I was doing some tests on it and it looks like this cell is bad. So I will be, after I'm done this maintenance, I will kind of show you guys what's going on with this battery and basically how I discovered it was failed and what I can do to kind of test it just to confirm that it failed. So we'll do that after. So let's get started with the actual maintenance. Now the first thing when you're doing this maintenance, you're kind of bending over a lot. So if you have long hair like me, it's kind of gonna get in the way. It's kind of gonna get in your face. I've been growing this for about a year now, by the way. So yeah, so if your hair is long like this, you probably want to tie it up a bit so it doesn't get in the way. Because you will want to be wearing safety glasses and I would advise to wear gloves. Personally, I don't like to bother. I find it makes it harder. But ideally, you should probably wear gloves. If you don't, just be aware of what you're touching. Because anything you touch with acid, you will basically ruin it. So like if you touch your clothing, you probably don't want to get anything in my beer, that would be bad. Like even a little drop in your clothing, and it doesn't happen right away, but over time it'll eat up through it. And even your fingers, obviously, you want to wash your hands very good after with soap. Because soap is alkaline, so it'll kind of get rid of the acid. If you do get a bit of acid on you, it's not to get in the world. Like, it's not going to immediately eat through. The battery acid is actually like a lower concentration. It's not pure. I forget what the concentration is. I mean, it is high, but it's not like, you know, the world. Obviously, try not to get any on you. Because what happens is when you open the little cover, there's always going to be a little bit of acid in the area. So just try not to touch that. Anyway, let's get started. So first I have to go behind and disconnect these. Now one thing I already did before I started this video is I turned off that switch, the number two bank. And this basically removes the batteries from the system and removes them from float. So that way they're not connected to anything, they're not being charged. And this kind of stops a little bit of the acid fizzle and all that. So it just makes it a little bit less messy when I open the caps. All right, here it is tied up. And now it's just time to engage the safety squints. Very good idea to have safety glasses, not only because of accidental acid splashes. If you happen to short out the batteries while you're working on them, you could send sparks flying and you don't want those in your eyes. So good idea to have safety squints. Also a good idea if you're really worried, and especially if you work on the big batteries like 48 volt systems, you probably want to put your mother on speed dial as well, just in case. So let's go ahead and disconnect the batteries. Now with a proper battery box, I wouldn't have to do that. All right, so the first battery is ready to come out. All the cables are undone. Now these are actually pretty heavy. They're 
I don't know, it weighs like 40 pounds probably, maybe more. 60 pounds maybe, I never actually weighed one. But I know what they're, they're heavier than they look. There it is. Now one thing you'll notice too is I have a box of baking soda. And I just put the whole box in there. And in case there's ever an acid leak, it'll basically neutralize the acid. And then the tray will contain the acid. And that's why I can't put four in here because I can't find trays that fit perfect. Like I can't put four of those trays. I, I basically designed this for four batteries. I didn't account for the trays basically. Anyway, let's put that one aside and then let's take the other one out and then we'll get started. Okay, so my camera mount is being really finicky. It's not letting me point the camera down without looking like it wants to fall. So this is probably the best angle you're gonna get. So basically what I got here is got the battery ready to go. I got a funnel here, so this just makes it easier to put the water in the cells. And then I got a flat screwdriver, which I'll be used to remove the covers. And I got a water jug here, which will dispense the distilled water. So let's get going. So first I'm going to take off the covers. And now there could be a bit of liquid around, and that is probably a little bit of acid that kind of splashes up as it's charging. So I usually try to just avoid touching that. And I just avoid trying to get it on anything. One problem I've noticed with most consumer products is that they keep changing them. So like, for example, I bought this battery model years ago and now they're different. The amp hour rating is not even the same. It's even, it's the same model of battery, but they changed it. So it's kind of a pain because if, in this case, they're all 12 volts, so it doesn't matter. But if I had, like, say, a string of 48 volts and I had one bad cell, I would actually have to change the whole string because I wouldn't be able to get the same batteries again. So it's kind of a pain, but... So, so if you ever wonder what it looks like inside a battery, it's like that. So basically, you can see... It might be hard to see on the camera. Let me see if I can zoom in. Like even with my eyes, I can't really see, but you can kind of see plates. No, but I'm going to get a flashlight. Yes, there's a good shot of the plates if it focuses. You can still see some bubbling going on. If you look carefully, you can kind of see the plates inside the battery. So each one of these cells produces about 2.25 volts on float, and they're 2 volts nominal, so this is what makes a 12 volt battery. Now normally you want to charge a battery at 13.5, which is 2.25 volt per cell, and that is basically the happy place where the battery is. It's basically where you can keep the voltage there indefinitely, and it'll be happy. It won't get overcharge or discharge. So anyway, let's get started. So what I usually do is I usually fill this Pyrex with water. I make sure to keep it clean so there's no contaminants. Because this is kind of a delicate job. You want to make sure you don't get any contaminants in there or it could possibly damage the batteries. So you don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and put water in here and then just start basically dumping it in the cells. I usually try to put water until I see the water level go up to there's like a little plastic lip. It's very hard to get that on camera, but the way the holes are, there's kind of like almost like a little pipe and then the pipe ends. So I try to get it all the way to the end of that pipe. That's kind of what I consider it full. So when I bought the battery, I checked and that's about where the level was at. So I just try to match it. So I'll go ahead and start dispensing water. First time you go to do this, you kind of end up being very delicate and then you start to get a feel for it. Because you don't want to overfill the cells either. Because if you get have them overflow, that would be kind of bad. They would just make a big mess.
Now it would probably be advisable to clean around the battery as well. The problem with that is you kind of risk dropping material inside, that there's a lot of dust in this environment. So I try to kind of just leave it alone because it's just gonna get dusty again anyway. So I just try to make sure not to knock anything in. There's kind of different methodologies can take. Now some people at the last video were quite concerned about all the dust in here and it is quite a concern, but I will be addressing that at some point. I want to enclose this room, seal it up, and then add some HVAC. And when I do that, I'll have some proper filtration and basically make sure there's no dust. The humidity here doesn't tend to be too high, so I don't like vacuuming the servers or using anything really to remove the dust because that might actually create a static. There is one server that I decommissioned a while back. I actually wanted to make a separate video of that where I'm going to clean out the whole thing. I think it'll be pretty satisfying to watch that. All right, so those cells are now at the proper level. So now you can actually see the water better. A while ago you couldn't really see the water because it was too deep. So like it was just dark in there. So now you can actually see the water. Well, the acid really. Perfect. So now let's move on to the next battery. Now at this point, because I've been yapping around while doing this, this would be a good time for me to go wash my hands. If you're not gonna, if you're gonna do like me and not wear gloves, which is probably a stupid idea by the way, but if you're gonna do like me and not wear gloves, at least wash your hands often. Make sure you don't get acid that sticks to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm just gonna push this battery over for now. It's pretty much the same routine, so I'm just gonna speed up this footage and then put them back. So these batteries are ready to go and they're going to be good for another year or so before I need to do this again. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them back in here and connect them up to those cables up there and it will be ready to go. Now when doing this it's always important to double check polarity. So now I would be tempted to just take the positive, pass it through, touch the positive battery, and then put a negative, touch the negative of the battery. But it's a good idea to just double check, go behind, and make sure that they're actually on the proper side. Because you don't want to mess that up. That's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and close this door a little bit. Now those fa these fans used to run, but they're cheap fans and then all the ball bearings started to just die on me. So I haven't been turning them on. So I just leave the door kind of open like that instead of closing it completely. It's kind of Mickey Mouse, but it hasn't been problematic. These batteries don't really generate much heat. And even the hydrogen they produce, there's not enough batteries to worry. Now in a big telecom plant with a big uh, 48 volt plant with two volt cells that are like 4,000 amp hours, yeah, you want ventilation. So anyway, so let's go ahead and turn on the switch. Now it's very important to turn this one on first and then turn this one off. Because what happens is if they're both off at the same time, the power happening goes out, well, guess what? All my stuff shuts down. So it's not good. This is actually why there's two battery banks. So while these ones are disconnected, if the power would have went out, my servers would have been okay. It would have been a bit of a scram, especially right now because I'm only running on one battery on the number one bank, but at least it gives me a chance to start shutting stuff down or whatever. What I would probably end up doing is just hurry up and finish my job and get the batteries in as soon as I can. So anyway, so right now the bank is somewhat charging. It's not too bad. 
the amp meter on that thing is not the most accurate. The numbers kind of jump all over the place. That's grabbing about two amps for now. So yeah, so I was talking about a battery that failed on me. So let's go ahead and actually analyze that battery. So what I have here is this battery, I was touching the cells and then some of them were actually getting pretty warm. And that's usually an indication that something is not quite right. So right now I'm going to go ahead and turn on this voltmeter. And the voltage is going to be probably around 10 volts. This kind of a crude setup here. There you go. Yeah, so the voltage is around 10.6 volts, which is typical because this battery is actually not a 12 volt battery. It's supposed to be a 12 volt battery, but one of the cells is shorted. So it's actually a 10 volt battery, basically dropping two volts. So I had this hooked up to a charger and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Now charging. Now normally when charging, the voltage would be more like 13 point something but I'm basically maxing out the amperage that it's set to, which is two amps. And the reason for that is because it's actually trying to charge a 10 volt battery with, 12, with a 12 volt charge. So this is essentially overcharging the remaining five cells. And however long the battery was in there in that state, this is exactly what was going on. Now that's a good thing with lead acid batteries. They're very robust. Even in a bad condition like this, nothing bad really happened. Anyway, so right now it's charging. So it's actually not bad. I mean, I'm actually overcharging those cells by quite a lot right now. 13 volts that it's charging at. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it and we'll see how the voltage will actually drop. So surprisingly, it doesn't drop that fast, but it does drop. If I leave this like for like an hour, it'll drop to like 10 volts. Basically, I'll tell you what I went through to troubleshoot this. So the first sign was the heat. And I should, oh, it is unplugged. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, you oh you can see that voltage dropping now. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's dropping very fast. Look at that. It's kind of funny because it's, it sticked around 12 volts for a while. And then it just, now it's dropping. Yeah, look at that. That's because one cell is shorted. So there's only five cells of the six that are actually active right now. The other one is essentially bypassed. And when I say shorted out, I'm kind of assuming it's shorted out. It's very hard to measure the voltage of each cell. There is a way to measure the charge rate with that thing there. So yeah, so basically when I went to touch the battery, I noticed it was kind of warm. And from experience, I realized that something wasn't quite right. It, usually heat in a battery, it means it's being overcharged. Or heat in a cell, I should say, because a battery is multiple cells. So this is a battery, but each little container that you see inside the battery, or each compartment is a cell. If one of those compartments gets hot, it means it's being overcharged. So with one cell shorted, all five compartments were essentially being overcharged. Yeah, so basically they were being overcharged. So when I was putting my finger across the cells, I can feel the ones that were warm. And then the one at the end actually wasn't that warm. Now, it's hard to gauge sometimes because the heat will kind of transfer anyway. It's when I opened it up that I was able to learn more. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and I'll show you my findings. Again, that voltage is still dropping. So it's like 10.8 and then it'll slowly keep dropping like that. I mean, technically if I wanted to, if I got like a charger that was optimized for a 10 volt battery, I could probably keep using this battery. But unfortunately, I don't really have a use for it and I don't have a 10 volt charger. Probably doesn't exist, but it wouldn't be that hard to make, I guess. So I'm just going to disconnect all this stuff. Now I already know this cell is bad, so I'm just going to open this side to show you. And one thing I also noticed when I opened this battery yesterday is the, the sulfur smell. Because the cells are being overcharged so much, they were really gassing quite a lot. So basically what I did is I go ahead and I suck some of the electrolyte out now that indicator is going to show whether or not the charge is I'm going to zoom into that so this rod here is actually indicates the level so the water is up to here and the green is way on top this means this cell is actually overcharged because it should be within the green actually within the white is pretty good too so if it's in the green it's good now this this cell is actually way overcharged, so this is why it's actually way below. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. 
I'm going to take from this cell. And notice how the, it keeps going up. And it's way out in the red. And the thing is still not floating. It's like hardly floating. So like I just didn't grab enough. So basically this cell is like bad. I believe at this point this would actually be water I think. Because the acid will actually collect on the plates. I believe that's what happens. Don't quote me on that. So yeah, so this battery is pretty much a dud, unfortunately. And what sucks is it's only from April 2013, so it's not like it's that old. But I looked at the reviews on Kane Tire site, and it seems a lot of people buy these batteries for their boats and stuff, and they don't last like a year. So I think I just got unlucky, and I chose a bad type battery. So that's pretty much it. So really, I'll probably have to just return this for recycling. And I'm not going to replace it, and instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide if I want to start using different batteries. So I'm just going to go through what I got now and eventually build a new battery plant. So that's pretty much it for this video. And the batteries are now maintained and they should be good for what, a year. I hope this was educational for you if you've never seen this done before. I mean, it's pretty simple really, but yeah, so this is pretty much it. Safety glasses off. My